Yo, yo, what's up, guys? Hey, yo, hi, hey, Stanny. Wait, no, that's not my name on the internet. It's Sahara Drag, SCLegacy.com. And uh, I am casting a game today between I'm Nesty, which I'm, uh, I'm, I'm told is the real Nesty GSL2 winner, and a player named uh, We Love TT or something, but on here he's called ETDJ Baker. I don't know, man. I don't know what, what these guys are doing with their names over there in their kooky countries. But uh, a couple of good players. I don't know. Anyone who wins the GSL is probably a pretty good player. So, uh, yeah, we're going to watch him play a game, a ZVP even. And I was listening to Janet Jackson, um, the album Janet, right before this. And I really wanted to just leave it running and just have this, like, super... Well, it's not super gay, but it's pretty gay for like a six foot six dude to be listening to. But I really wanted to have Janet Jackson running this whole commentary, but uh, then YouTube would be all, "Hey, you got Janet Jackson on your video. You gotta, hey, you're in big trouble, Mister." And then Machine would be all, "Hey, that's not allowed." So I didn't, unfortunately. So you're just stuck with my Panacean voice. I don't know if you can actually uh, ad adjectify that word, and I also don't know if you can actually use adjectify to describe something being turned into an adjective, but right now I'm just like looking at mirrors into mirrors into pictures of mirrors right now, and it's just blowing my mind. In case you guys haven't been able to tell yet, it is 5 in the morning where I am. I have been I stayed up all night playing Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Um, almost done with the single player, I think, and it is fantastic. It's a great game. You guys should play it. The multiplayer is really fun. Not as fun as StarCraft, though. Um, I hit the uh, 1900 mark earlier today. Pretty proud of that. I uh, dipped a little bit below it and got got back up to like I was like 1890 something, and then I went down to like 1850, and now I'm back up to 1900, a little bit over. So that's cool. Go me. Looks like we're gonna see an ST. Uh, Nesty places his, uh, he's going to chrono boost his uh, zealot all the way across Lost Temple and try and do some damage, but that's a long, long walk, friends. And uh, he did uh, place his uh, gateway down here at the bottom of the ramp for just this reason. I was about to predict that, but alas, I was too slow. Not that it's hard to predict, given where that building was or anything. But yeah, there's the uh, fast expansion from, from our friend uh, Nesty. And uh, here's a zealot coming now. Um, never going to catch those lings, but maybe... I don't know. He was, he was hoping. So it looks like these four links are going to come over here and counter while this uh, expansion goes down for Zerg. So actually both players expanding at nearly the same time. I think uh, Ed T. G. Baker, J. Baker here is going to be just fine. J. Baker, now that I realize it, uh, John Baker is the name of uh, the guy from Chips, the best TV show ever made of all time. Um... He had Frank Poncherello, the Poncho, you know, who knows who Ponch is, but the other guy was J John Baker. So maybe that's maybe this guy's a big Chinese chips fan. Uh, that would be cool. I'd be down with that. I would respect him. Respect all chips fans. And expansion just finishing here. This one's a little bit behind. And uh, oh yeah people get really weirded out if the production tab isn't up the whole time, like they really need to know, like if he's still making drones five minutes into the game. So there's a cybernetics core going down, along with the gateway and the forge. So we're going to see a, a turtle, in, turtle in heavy economy build, probably with some nice harassment, we'll see. See what he does with his forge, if he throws down some cannons, or if he's going to upgrade. Looks like cannons. Kaboom. And in the meantime, uh, Roach Warren being built for Nesty. Uh, Nesty, a very wealthy man. Well, I mean, <laughs> not compared to like really wealthy people, but very wealthy for a StarCraft uh, player these weeks, just because, uh, you know, he got a head up, good up spike at the GSL. Won like almost $100,000, like $80,000. That's, uh, I, I, uh, I wouldn't be driving a 93 Kia Spectra with broken doors if I won that tournament. Let's just say that. Um, I don't even know if it's a Spectra. I just know it's a Kia. I think it's like such an old Kia that they only had one Kia and it was just called the Kia. 
like the Kia Kia, and that's what I drive. Um, yeah. It's got a tape deck in it. And these guys aren't doing much. That's what I'm talking about, my Kia. Kia! There's a Stargate going down over here. I told you he was going to turtle up in her ass and also food block himself. He did food block himself there a little bit, but he should be okay. In the meantime, uh, just happily making nothing but drones is Nesty because that's, uh, dude, I could not believe how much damage drones did in the GSL. It was absolutely preposterous how sturdy and damaging drones were. It was just ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say that drones are the absolute number one reason he won the GSL season 2, not just for their fighting ability, but also because you know, his heavy emphasis on the economy. So, looks like we're going to have a little bit of a push out action here, maybe just going to take these towers, both claiming their territory, these are the Bloods, and these Zerg Krip Vatos over here, blue and red, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm that old, and... <laughs> I'm going to start going to work on these rocks. These Zerglings are like really frustrated. They're like, man, they kicked us out of our tower. Let's go beat up this rock. So that's what they do. Getting the Agilial reconstitution is an ST. Uh, looks like we're going to see Phoenixes come out of uh, here. Every time I say the word Phoenix, I think of Chief Thunder from Killer Instinct. Because every time he shot that little bird, he was all, Phoenix! Phoenix! And, uh, yeah, sorry about that. So there's the Hydra Den. We're going to see a nice little Roach Hydra misc. Mixk. Mix. Mengsk. Um, not really spreading his creep at all. I'm starting to really question if this guy's the real Nest Team man. Uh, average, that's pretty high APM, but, I mean, not one tumor? Is he, I mean, I guess he's just been making larva like mad. Yeah, looks like he's just been spawning larva. Yeah, he doesn't want the creep tumors. All right, whatever. So there's Void Ray, by the way. Void Ray, pretty good against Roaches. Ooh, nice Zergling surround. And uh, I don't know if he's going to be ready for this. Uh, yeah, he's got a couple cannons. That should help a lot. Um, he should have... And uh, Void Ray going to work. He, I think this Void Ray should have just gone home and went to town on the Queens. Or gone to the enemy's base and tried to kill some Queens. That's what I would have done with it. But I'm also a rookie. So there he is taking his third at the same time. Um, just about to take his third as Protoss, so... Both pretty uh, pretty into their into their three base builds are these guys. I haven't seen much in the way of harassment. Um, you know, he's basically just used this phoenix to scout and this void ray to just, eh, just kind of pick at some roaches. Um, but yeah, getting the ranged upgrades obviously good when you're getting roaches and hydra. Hydra going to be very effective against these air units. Uh, Roach is going to be very effective against uh, these units. So, you know, it makes sense to me. And there's the first Hydra out, um, ETDJ Baker, a.k.a. We Love TT, is going to be very discouraged by seeing that Hydra list. He's going he's gonna to know the scouting party is over. And uh, I don't know if you've ever been kicked out of a scout party, but it's quite demoralizing. Because scouts have nowhere to go. No one wants them to scout anymore. They just die to Hydra lists like this. Or, yeah, Phoenixes. They're... Phoenixes are kind of like scouts from StarCraft 1 in that they're, well, they're like phoenixes except way better. I mean, they're like scouts except way better because scouts are pretty useless. So I guess they're not like scouts at all. That was my deep thought of the day for y'all. Yeah, man. And uh, just uh, zoop duping around with these overlords. Um, he's got good map coverage. He's pretty aware of what's going on with Protoss. That's a sign of a very strong good player. A dessert player that... Um, has really good mid-game scouting. So he's seen the new expansion of Protoss, and he sees his army composition with the Colossi, so good scouting there on his part, I must say. Um, extended Thermal Lance is just about finished for Protoss, and in the meantime, just uh, getting his infestation pit and continuing to make roaches and hydras while upgrading. And I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see him take his fourth here anytime soon. Uh, Red's money's getting a bit high. Ah, laddie. Ah, and four gateways will solve that pretty quickly. And there's the money plummeting. Researching Blink and warping in a buttload. 
Yeah, I said it. A buttload of stalkers. Mm, not the most action-packed game, but some really, uh, really strong mechanics from both players, actually. Especially Nesty. I've, I've just been pretty impressed by his, uh, like I emphasized before, his scouting. And uh, Protoss is not aware at all about this. Um, oop, yeah, now he is. And, you know, um, what Protoss player at this point is not going to have an observer above his army? I mean, come on. At this level, you had to know that. You had to, you had to think that. So unnecessarily losing some roaches there, but it was worth a shot, I guess. It wasn't so bad. But uh, that is going to maybe provoke Protoss a little bit. No, he's going to back out. I thought maybe he was going to get all crazy. But alas. So it looks like he's waiting for Blink to finish, actually. Um, and I'm um, not going to wait for plus two. Yeah, Blink's going to finish, and he's going to go ahead and push. Uh, pretty good army here. Uh, plus one, plus one for these rangers. He wanted to fight right there with the boss I could get on the high ground, but... Zerg wisely backs out. So he, uh, Protoss just making his presence known here. Along with the pile on the warp in. Oh man. When you see Protoss doing this, it's a good time to attack. But, uh, ooh, nice force fields there. Um, Nesty had the right idea. You want to go ahead and attack him before that pile on warps in because then these reinforcements come like crazy. But the good force fields here by uh, Protoss player. Um, Colossi are getting lots of shots off on the Hydras, which is exactly what you want to do. Extend Thermal Lance is doing, doing work. And good macro here, continuing to reinforce during the battle, um, as is Nesty. But yeah, just a completely one-sided fight there. Those force fields made all the difference in the world. I want to watch those force fields again because that was the major catalyst. The roaches simply could not get in there to do what they needed to do. Sorry, I'm going to keep backing up. And one more. Okay, so there he is poking away at three tumors. And right there, not only does he cut off the infestors, but he cuts off the roaches, and then he's able to reinforce with a huge group of stalkers. And then uh, the force field's still being effective there, and he's just reinforcing the force field. And look at how these troops had to walk all the way around the left side of the force. Force field is such an integral uh, spell for Protoss players, um, especially against these short-range units like roaches and hydras. I know they have decent range, but they're still... They still have to get someone close to shoot at things like Colossi, which is the exact point there. And a very cool little uh, composition, too, with this mostly stalker, a solid amount of Colossi, um, a few sentries for force fields, and a void ray. That he uh, kept that void ray alive, he didn't just throw it away when he was scouting, and that allowed him to use it in his push, which uh, I'm actually sure it helped a ton. I mean, I'm not going to go back and check, but I'm sure it was very, very helpful in that fight. So, yeah, nice timing push there by the Protoss player. So if you're struggling with Protoss, wondering what to do against Zerg Jerks, try and fashion a build after this. Watch this replay, it's available on Team Liquid. And uh, study it, and try and emulate it. There's a GG from I'm Nesty. So yeah, there was a cool game. Hope you guys liked it. This has been Sahara Drak, SCLegacy.com. See you soon.